All right, let's talk about pre-approval tips on getting a mortgage. So every day I talk to people about buying a house and they have no idea what to do, right? So you don't buy houses every day. You don't get mortgages. You have really no idea, maybe some idea. And that's totally normal. I don't know how to teach a class, right? If you're a teacher, I'm not a doctor. I mean, I can't do videos, to be honest. I have someone doing the videos for me. I know mortgages. And so I can help you get a mortgage, right? So I can give you tips. So on the phone, I go through the steps. I act like you don't know anything, you know, so that you understand the process. There's three things you need. The three most important things you need is, is a credit, right? Your credit score has to be at least a 580. If it's a 580, make sure you have nothing wrong in the last two years, like no missed payments, uh, no collections, no charge offs. It has to be a clean two years. If you have one or two, I can probably tolerate it. But if you have a 580 score, likely you need a very clean history. Now, if you have a 580 score and it's because of your high balances on your credit cards and you have great credit otherwise, then yeah, it, that's no problem. I see that sometimes. I'll get an approval on a 580, no issues. But usually a 580 is due to collections, due to charge offs, due to you had a rough period in your life, or you're young and had no idea what credit was and didn't use it properly, and now you're kind of stuck with some old collections. If they're old, no issue. 580, clean year or two, you're golden. 620 is about the same, not a whole lot different. But if you have a 620 and some like three or four credit cards that you've had for a few years, that's good. Okay, we probably can get you approved. 640 gets better, but it can also be in that same neighborhood. But once you get out of the 640 zone, we start getting into, we don't care about your credit history as much. We care about your score. The score is going to get you where you need to be. So You know, you know your credit. If it's pretty good for the last two years, that's fine. In fact, if you have zero score, that's fine too. I can still do do a loan for you. Um, the other thing is assets. You got to have money. There's no freebies out there. You know, I know that um, there's a lot of, I would say, fake advertising about down payment assistance and all, all this stuff that can get you into a home for free. It, it does exist and it's possible, but the qualification is very difficult and the interest rates are high and the fees are high and it might... might Might or might not make sense. I have all the down payment programs so we can talk about it. If you need assistance, maybe it will work. It does work. I mean, I do use it. In fact, that's I used to only use down payment programs in the beginning. But now I kind of, I steer people into saving up. At least save up 3%. If you're going to get a $300,000 home, save up $9,000. It's not a big deal. You can do it. It just takes a little bit of staying at home on the weekends, not traveling, not buying anything new. You know, don't go get a new car with a $900 car payment, that type. Type of thing and that's the other thing about your credit uh, I didn't mention before is watch your debts I mean if you have a BMW with a $900 car payment and you make $40,000 a year you're not going to be able to buy a home so be careful don't go buy a car don't buy anything big right now if you don't have anything don't do it until you have your house the house is the most important thing uh, buying a car is easy any any dealership is going to give you a car it doesn't really matter if you have a house already they don't care but if you have a car and then you want to buy a house it makes it a lot harder unless you make a lot more money uh, and that that gets into the uh, the third thing so we have First, we have credit. Second, we have assets. Third, we, we have um, your income. Uh, that's really important, right? So the more you make, the better. Uh, generally, you're going to need at least 50 grand these days to make to buy a house. Maybe 40. If you can find something in the 200 range, we can do 40K. It just depends. But usually, it's 50 and higher. So you're probably going to have to buy with your husband or wife or some family member if you want something in the 400,000 range, 300,000 range. So anyway, that's when you call a loan officer and I look at, at it all and I guide you, right? So that I guess that would be the fourth thing or actually the first thing is just to find a loan officer i can tell you all this in 10 minutes over the phone whether you qualify and what you need to do buying a home is not hard for me and i can get you into a home i can hold your hand the whole way through so if you don't know how to do it just call me i'll, I'll help you uh, but just to give you kind of a basic knowledge this is what you need to do is you got to make sure you have credit income and uh, assets you have to have some money and it, the more money you have the better It's going to lower your rate. It's going to get rid of mortgage insurance, et cetera. So let's say you call me and you pass, right? I've approved you. Now you have a, an approval and you send that. Now you need a realtor, right? So you might already have a realtor. You may not have a realtor. A realtor is extremely important. I used to think before I did mortgages, realtors weren't important. In fact, I, would, I wouldn't use a realtor. One time I didn't use a realtor and I lost $85,000. I bought a piece of land. I was going to build on it. I didn't know anything about it. I gave the builder $85,000. I thought that's the way it worked. The deal didn't go through. I lost my $85,000. If I'd use a realtor, they would have protected me. They would have had me use a closing attorney. 
everything would have been totally protected. I never would have signed, but I didn't know, right? So that's an extreme example, but that, that kind of stuff happens. A realtor will also help you get a better price. They'll help you find a better house. They'll help you uh, get a better loan officer, right? I have, I have my realtors and they only use me. We're a team. It's really good to have a realtor and a loan officer that work together because uh, they're on your side. Again, you're at work. Let's say you're a school teacher and you're teaching or whatever. You don't have time to be focusing on your documents and stuff or to understand everything, but the, the realtor will help you understand what I'm asking for because I don't always have time to explain it all and the realtor maybe maybe she lives next door or he lives next door to you or close by they can come over and help you so first i approve you you give that letter to your realtor the realtor then will take you shopping and you guys go shopping for a house once you find the house pardon the noise they're painting the house here they're making some noise so i can't really stop that so in any case so when you're buying a house, you have to have an approval letter and the realtor will, will, will show you some homes. Um, she'll take you to some homes. You finally find that home that you love. She's going to give or he's going to give that letter to the seller and the seller and their, her, their realtor is going to look at your letter and look at your offer. If they accept it, you guys sign the contract. Once you sign that contract, you're going to give a deposit. Sometimes it's uh, it's usually 1% of the price. So it's around $3,000, $4,000, $2,000, but that's up to you. That's not my requirement. That's just something to tell the seller you're serious. Now in that contract, it's going to have some dates, right? So you need to pay attention to your dates. There's finance dates. Just yell out the window. Okay. So the earnest money is about 1% and you're going to give that to uh, the realtor who gives it to the closing attorney. So the realtor and you are going to choose an attorney that's going to handle the transaction. They're going to take the contract. They're going to take your earnest money. They're going to work with you and the seller on putting the house into your name, taking the title work, the insurance, everything, putting it in your name. So the attorney is a big part. So the realtor, I... I approve you, the realtor finds you a house, and the attorney makes sure that the house is put into your name legally. And then once you go under contract, the realtor sends me the contract and your loan begins. Generally we have 30 days. Sometimes it's 17 days, it just depends. Right now in this market, 30 days because it's not a crazy market anymore. It used to be we had to rush through it to get the deal, but you probably can get a 30 day contract. It's much better for you, for me, for everybody, way less stressful. All right, so now I have the contract. The realtor sent it to me. My assistant or whoever, you know, if you use a different loan officer, their assistant is gonna reach out to you, ask for all your documents that you haven't sent already. So we need your driver's license, your pay stubs, your W-2s, and your bank statements. And then we'll need some letters, et cetera. We send it to the underwriter. The underwriter approves your loan. And then we have more conditions. We ask for some new stuff. And this goes back and forth for a little while until we get ready to close. We get what's called the clear to close. It goes to the attorney and the attorney gets you at the table. You sign. Now it's your house. You have the keys. That's kind of the basic process on buying a home. So if you have any questions, put some comments below uh, or you can actually go to my website and you can ask questions there. You can text me. You can call me. Um, if you want to apply, go ahead and apply there. But yeah, my name is Jody from Great American Mortgage. I hope this video was helpful. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.